risk management is always related to a specific context. In a project setting, for example, the context of risk management relates to the stages of the project management life cycle, being initiation, planning, execution, closure, and monitor and review. The risk management process should be applied as early as possible in the project life cycle so that risks are identified, assessed, and appropriate responses developed before moving to execution. Let's now take a closer look at the risk management process. Our risk management canvas has six segments. Each segment represents a stage of risk management. The monitor and review stage is shown as a continuous activity throughout the process. We start with an overview of each stage and highlight key issues that will inform and enhance managerial decisions. The first stage of the risk management process sets the context and specifies objectives. Being the first stage, it is vital that there is absolute clarity on the context in which the risk management process is to be applied. This is followed by specifying key objectives to be achieved. The two key questions to be addressed are, first, what is the context? Consider that the process can be applied at the strategic, operational, departmental, or functional level within an organization. In this course, we will apply the process to a project management setting. Once the context has been established, we can develop and agree on the objectives specific to our project. Second, what are the key objectives? You may recall that we defined risk as uncertainty on the achievement of our objectives. Therefore, it stands to reason that before identifying the types of risk or uncertainty we may be faced with, we first have to determine and agree on the project-specific objectives. Once the objectives have been specified, we can move to the second stage of the process. Risk identification considers the types of risks or uncertainties that may impact on achieving our set objectives. Identifying a range of possible risks takes practice and experience. Brainstorming is a common technique that is used, and it may be beneficial for you to consider different categories or types of risk to consult with your team and other stakeholders. Key questions you will need to consider in this stage are, how will you identify risks to objectives? What categories will be used? And what are the cause and effect of risks on your objectives? Step three of the process requires us to assess the risks that we have identified in stage two. For each and every risk identified, we now have two further questions to consider. The first question you need to ask is, what is the likelihood of this risk actually occurring? The next question then moves to thinking about the possible consequence to your project objectives should the risk occur. A combination of both the likelihood and consequence discussion then enables an initial risk assessment to be performed. A number of tools have been developed for this type of qualitative risk assessment, often referred to as the risk assessment matrix. This is something that we will illustrate further in the coming sections of the course. Key questions that you will need to consider in the risk identification stage are, how will you assess likelihood and consequence of each risk? How will you determine the overall risk level? And are there any existing controls in place? Now that we have concluded our risk assessment stage, we will need to decide how to respond to the assessed risks. For example, what type of actions do you believe you would need to adopt in order to minimize threats and maximize opportunities to your project's objectives? The focus is therefore about finding ways of reducing the negative risks, leveraging the positive risks, or simply accepting the risks in an informed manner. Key questions in this stage include, what response options will you consider? What additional resources will you require? Who will be responsible for managing and implementing risk response? And how will you document the outcomes? The next step, and arguably the most important step throughout the risk management process, is communicating. 
Communicating the identified risks and responses to your team and stakeholders underpins the successful management of the risk management process. Communication needs to occur regularly, openly and formally to ensure that all stakeholders are aware of the risks and planned responses. Open and honest communication further allows for all stakeholders to be involved in the risk management process and offer input where necessary. Key questions include, what do I need to communicate? To whom do I need to communicate? And what strategies can I use to communicate? The final stage of the process is that of monitor and review. As you can see, we have placed monitor and review as a continuous circular activity that occurs at each stage throughout the process. In doing so, we highlight the importance of monitoring and reviewing risk management throughout the life cycle of the project as well. Things will change as you move through the project life cycle. Therefore, to be effective, the risk management process must remain dynamic. Key questions you will need to consider when monitoring and reviewing the process include, what are the timelines I need to consider? How often do I review and revise the risk work undertaken? How effective is our risk management strategy? How effective is risk identification process? How accurate and effective is risk assessment? Have risk response methods been effective? What records do I need to keep? And are safety procedures being followed? To conclude, it is clear that risk management is a standardized process and therefore can be applied in a number of different contexts. Application of the process in a project setting is not only essential, but it also requires early adoption and continuous review and updating throughout the entire project lifecycle.